What's up guys, I'm Steve, this is Beautiful. Today we're gonna show you a quick and easy DIY how to replace an electric water heater. This is a 50 gallon model, our old one is leaking, and it's time for that bad boy to go. So we're gonna replace it and we're gonna show you how. Before we get started guys, safety, safety first. You wanna make sure you turn off your electricity, you wanna make sure you check it, double check it, triple check it. 240 volts guys is nothing to play with. It's perfectly easy and safe to work with but you gotta use common sense. Hot water heaters or water heaters are expensive enough as it is without a trip to the emergency room. I know, you don't so wanna go. We're not going to the emergency room today and we're gonna show you what we do to make it safe. Excuse the mess guys, but this is what happened. I just wanted to show you the bottom of this tank is all rusted out. We knew this was bound to need replacing because we already saw the rust on the bottom. It eventually rusted all the way through the tank. Water started leaking out. Step number one, is to make it safe, we're gonna turn off the electricity. Step number two, I've got a Klein Tools, guys. If you don't have one of these, you need to get one. I'll put the link down below. This is a Klein Tools voltage tester. It's contactless. That means you don't have to touch metal on metal. It's awesome. I'm gonna show you how it works real quick on an outlet. I always check it on outlet first to make sure it's working. All you do is turn it on by pushing the red button. You hear that? Electricity. Nothing? Electricity. I turned this back on just to show you guys. Here's the before. You can hear it, you can see it, it's hot. Breaker off, safe. That's money, that's what you want. Water electricity don't mix guys, so if you have anything that's close by and close proximity to your water heater, go ahead and cut power to that too, unless you absolutely have to have it because it's gonna make you just that much safer. Water and electricity do not mix and you don't know what, what might spring a leak or what may happen when you're pulling this thing out. After you've cut power to your tank, the next thing you're going to do is cut the water supply to your tank. We have a valve on top of ours, and I'm going to show you where it's at. Just, it's right here. We've already turned it off because it was leaking into the floor, though. Next step, guys, is to drain the water. Pro tip, use a splitter if you don't have the clearance you need for the type of water hose that you have. These valves use a flathead screwdriver. All you've got to do is put the head in and twist it to the left. To drain this properly, what you're going to want to do is open up hot water. Oh, hi, beautiful. Hi. You're gonna wanna open up hot water uh, faucet that's close by. That's gonna allow air to get back in the tank. The other thing that I like to do is to go ahead and disconnect the hot side line from the top of the water heater so that it allows plenty of air to get in there because what'll happen is there's a little suction, like a vacuum in there, and your water's never gonna drain out if you don't let enough air back in. I went ahead and took this off, just used a 10 inch crescent and that allowed plenty of air to get in here so the water started flowing well. While this is draining, we're gonna go ahead and take this off. We're gonna disconnect the electricity and we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this other water line. expecting that <laughs> this is an old whirlpool energy smart water heater so most water heaters just have a little cover plate here that's the only difference the only difference is that's a little controller you got it yep now that we've got the lid off just for safety guys we're gonna double and triple check this bad boy nope, we're good nothing good. yep we're good Disconnect the water lines. We're gonna save this down pipe for the pressure relief valve, so I'm gonna go and take this off. Everything's disconnected, water lines there, electricity there. We've disconnected our drain hose, and now we're gonna use a dolly and get this thing out of here. For now, beautiful is cleaning the floor so we can put the new one in. This floor got wrecked. Look, that's what it looked like. <sighs> it's looking a lot better. All right guys, we got the new one in. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put Teflon tape. We're gonna wrap it three times clockwise. 
Next, I want to show you guys, we've got a 90 degree squeeze connector because we're going to make this as clean and pretty as possible. We've got that metal conduit that you guys saw that's gonna go right across here. And this is gonna give it a nice clean connection here that's also gonna be secure. I would highly recommend replacing this plastic valve with a brass one. They didn't have any in stock at Lowe's. We may come back in at a later date and swap that out. We're gonna use the same wire nuts that came off the old one. They'll work just fine for this. We just wanna make sure that they have a good secure connection. We're gonna do black to black and white to red. Remember this is 220. Tug on them, make sure they're nice and snug. We're gonna push all this down, move some out of the way. Then you're gonna connect the ground to the green screw. These top plate screws, guys, are a quarter of an inch. I always like to check my wires one more time before I put the plate on, just in case some wires got loose. Next, we're gonna reconnect our water lines. Don't over tighten these water lines, guys. Just make them nice and snug. We're gonna reconnect this pipe to the pressure relief valve. Got our water hooked up, electricity hooked up. We've got the pipe and we've got our drain valve down there is nice and snug and closed. We're ready to open the water valve and check for leaks. Now that the hot water valve is open and filling your tank, you want to let as much air out of the system as possible. So go ahead and open it up, at least for a little while, get some air out. Then we're going to close it, let it fill up some more, do the same. It's going to blow some bubbles and air out. That's okay. That's just part of getting the air out of the tank. The tank is full guys, we've closed all the valves. You want pressure to build up, so let us sit for a while with all the valves closed and check it for leaks. All right, beautiful, what's next? The power. The power. Now that we've got this charger, before we touch anything, just to be safe, we're gonna go probe it. Again, with our same voltage tester, we're gonna touch around all the metal pieces to make sure that no lines got crossed, either in the work we did or something catastrophic from the factory or whatever. So we're just gonna probe all around the unit and make sure that we don't see anything hot. Looks good. Quick reminder, guys, if you have an electric water heater timer, make sure you go through and reset the time. It's gonna be off. Anybody wondering what this is right here, this is actually a set of magnets that you put in line over your pipe and it helps keep the debris from going into your water heater and then every now and then you're supposed to pull this pipe off, take the magnet off, flush it out. I don't know if they still sell these, but I'll try to find the link for this and this and I'll put them down below so you guys can go check out the specific models that we have. Anything else we use today tool wise, I'll try to put down below. Final touch guys, add your foam. It's easy to do. Why not, right? Adds just a little bit more insulation and we just attached it with a few zip ties. That's it guys, no leaks. We've already tested it at the faucets. We've got hot water again. Thank you for helping, beautiful. You're welcome. How hard was that? No, it wasn't hard at all. It wasn't hard at all. That was super easy. It's a very easy task to do and there's just no sense in spending a ton for a plumber to come in and do something that you could have easily done yourself. Yeah. I hope you guys found this video useful and interesting and I hope that it helped you guys if you're in the same boat as us. We are very grateful to have hot water back. I know, I'm ready for my nice steaming hot shower. I'm ready to join her in that nice steaming hot shower. <laughs> and we have gone two days without hot water now, right? Two days. Yeah. You don't realize how bad you need that hot water until you don't have it anymore. Thanks for watching the video guys. We love you. God bless. 
and y'all take care. Bye, guys.